All right, guys, and welcome to our Monday night shiur. And uh, we're in the Hey Shavat after the Hilul Lauda Baba Sali. Again, we have to say a big miracle that happened during the Hilul Lauda Baba Sali. You guys may have heard about it, may have not heard about it, but it's a mitzvah to, to uh, publicize. publicize the miracles of the Tzadikim. And uh, you know, the Baba Sali, he was, he's buried in Nitivot. A southern city, very south, and um, a lot of Jews go there. It's one of the biggest hilulot in Eretz Yisrael. And the Hamas Nikim were preparing at least forty rockets to shoot at Nitivot. And the same morning that they were preparing to shoot, they were found by a group of Golani soldiers, and they were echamim chaslut kol pluga. They were making the mitzvah, uh, the mitzvah, Tim Hayat Zecher Amalek, Mitachat Ashamayim, Lot Ishkach. As they were pinpointing the, the rockets to Nitivot. Another miracle I have to say, maybe you guys heard about it, since we already, we already unfortunately become desensitized. Uh, we stopped listening and knowing what's going on over there. There was a guy, he was part of a Golani Pluga. Golani, there's a, those are like the foot soldiers. And uh, at least most of them. And uh, he was he was in the pluga, and he was a religious Jew. Uh, observant, you know. In Israel, unfortunately, there is a difference between dati and Haredi. In America, you really don't feel that too much. But in Israel, unfortunately, you feel that a lot between being a dati and a Haredi. It's not important what it is. But uh, there was a Dati guy in the Pluga, in the platoon over there, and he went to David Mincha. And like a, um, like a rat out of the thing, as he was diving, you know, east from the Minhara, small little tunnel, comes out a, a terrorist with an RPG. RPG is very deadly. Right in front of him? Right in front of him. 10 meters away from him. And he yells, Mechabel eser mete, Mechabel eser mete. And right away the whole pluga came and knocked him out. Bishchut, and if he wouldn't have davened that way, he wouldn't have seen him come out. Bishchut, Filat Mincha. The whole platoon was saved with at least a couple of deaths over there. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard last Motzei Shabbat, there was a whole group of soldiers, Lo Aleinu, that died, around nine of them. It was not the, from the terrorists. They were handling uh, some sort of explosives, explosives and they unfortunately lost their lives. Al Kiddush Hashem. The explosives went up. Yeah. And uh, to just to show that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was in charge of everything, how you go and how you don't go. So may all of our mitzvot and our tefilot, and I always say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu when I dive in Shmona Yisra before I give you guys the shiur, it's very important to me the shiur to give the people who are listening to you guys that that cheshek to continue serving Kadosh Baruch Hu. I always say Kadosh Baruch Hu, I don't, I don't, I'm not looking for any schar for any of the Torah that I say or any of the stories that I say or any of the things that I awaken in your hearts to serve Hashem. Everything should be la kamash kinta ma'afra or leilu shchinat uzenu. And may I be zocheh that, as the Zohar says, that even if a person is zocheh in his life to to bring back one Jew, one Jew, just one, back from the from the depths of the klipa, from the depths of the of the sitra achra, even if he's just zochet to do one Jew back, his sachar in olam haba. Now that we're doing it because of the zachar, just show you how much Hashem appreciates you, that you're his uh, his his ambassador in this world. His sachar is not it's not something that you can relate to, especially somebody who does it more and more and more, and he's always trying to bring people. They say about the chafetz chaim, chafetz chaim. Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kohen Meradin, who doesn't know who the Hafez Chaim was? They say about him when he was a young boy, he was a very short kid. They say he was shorter than the average man. You guys seen his pictures, but that's when he's old, but they say that's how, that's how his height was. He was not a very commanding person when he walked into a room. He was a very, very pushed person when he was a young boy. He used to want to be mekayim the mitzvah chocheach tochiach et amitecha. 
uh, show your friend that what he's doing is an avera, but he didn't know how to do it without hurting somebody. So he was thinking, 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 and he said to himself, I saw this recently in a safer, a new bi or a biography came out of him, from about him. What he used to do is he used to write on a paper all that when you see a guy doing averot, he used to write on a paper all the mitzvot from the, the Torah. Let's say it says, Lo techalelu tashabbat, or zachor v'shamor tashabbat. Then he used to write the Rishonim, the early rabbis about it, the Acharonim. And he put that halacha that he used to go over in a piece of paper, he used to crumble it up. When the guy wasn't looking, put it in his pocket or in his sidur. <laughs> like this, the guy would, and he says, I was mekayin the mitzvah, mochech, tochech, and amidecha. <laughs> and he used to see bracha in it. So when a person does a mitzvah, if he really wants to do it correctly, he will find a way to, he'll find some way to come with some kind of, you know, some kind of idea to be mekayin the mitzvah. With that being said, our shiur tonight is uh, Amen. and also uh, and all of the chatufim. I said this guy, whoever I said this, whoever was in the ta'anit on Sunday, we were zochet to do our second ta'anit, and whoever was in the ta'anit on Sunday uh, was very beautiful, and we said that you know we're in shavavim days. And we're all worried about our personal nitzotzot de gidusha that went to the klipa and the chatot yemei anilurim when we were younger, hopefully. And uh, the kasha is, um, you know, is there is there a, a bigger essence of our nitzotzot de gidusha that are in the klipa? And the answer is that when you see a Jew, a hostage, in the jail. You know, you are allowed to sell a separate Torah to take a Jew out of jail. You are allowed to sell a separate Torah just to take a, to, to, you know, when uh, there's a lot of controversy when Gilad Shalit, you guys remember him? Yeah. Gilad Shalit? What year was it when five he got years. out? <laughs> five years. Huh? Five years he, he was in uh, Fatu. But what, what year did he get out? What year did he get out? 20, 2009. 2009? Wow. When he got out, the guy who made the whole Akto uh, Simchat Torah massacre was one of the people who got out. So they asked the question, who, who allowed Netanyahu to, because he was the right winger, you know? You wouldn't expect the right winger to do that. Who allowed him to, who gave him the Psak Halacha? To, uh, I'm getting there. Who gave the, him the Psak Halacha to allow him to release, I don't know what, how much was it, what, 1,000, 2,000? Uh, huh? 1,027. 1,027. That's very close to the amount of the Nitzotzot that a person kills by Kriyat Shema Lamita. Who allows him to kill, or who allowed him to release so many prisoners of uh, ter terrorists for the sake of one Jewish captive? We know the Maharam Merotenberg, Rabbi Moshe Merotenberg, who was the Gedol Hador. When I say Gedol Hador, I'm not using that word. You know, there's a rabbi in Bnei Brak. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. I'm not gonna, you know, I'll say his name. His name is Rabbi Yisrael Schneor. Never, you heard of him? <coughs> huh? You heard of him. The guy knows, I'm not, I'm not lying and I'm not exaggerating, over 200,000 books by heart. Oh, wow. It's encyclopedia. When I say it's encyclopedia, I'm not even joking. You see the guy, a video of this guy, you, you tell him a word. Find me how many times this word is, Eliyahu Anavi is written in the whole Tanakh. He goes like this for a couple of seconds. Literally, a, a computer. Is it Savant? Huh? Savant? He actually acts like like it a bit. But uh, I'm not sure. But uh, he's, he's, uh, he's about 30, 30 something. To over 200,000 books by heart. 200,000 books. By the way, just as a side note, how many times is Eliyahu Anavi written in the whole Tanakh? Ask him, uh, zero. Huh? <laughs> Why do you need to be a Sabbath? 68 times. That's why we say in Motzei Shabbat, Eliyahu Anami Zohor Lato. Apparently. The whole week should be Bechinat Chaim. And that's why Eliyahu Anami, he's not, he never died. He's Bechinat Chaim. And how many times is he written the whole Tanakh? 68, I mean, not in the Torah, obviously, but he's not, he wasn't even born then, but 
the Devim Ketuvim 68 times. And how many times is he written without the letter of Hav? Eliyah, five times. Why? It says, Yaakov Avinu said to him, I'm going to uh, give me a hand that you're going to come be Mevaser Tagiwura. How many times? How many fingers do you have in a hand? Five. Yeah. Five times in the whole Torah, Yaakov is written with a vav. Ah, Five times Eliyahu, yeah, exactly. He took one finger from Eliyahu. Every single time he took one finger. That's something that I took from him. I just saw a small clip or something somebody sent me. But you know what 200,000 books by heart is? That's, that's, not even, that's not even a human being. That's, uh, that's like a gift from... From heaven, you know? I think what? in his case, you have to read it. Yeah, he yeah. probably has photographic memory, mamash photographic yeah. memory. That's a lot of books to read. That's a lot of books to read, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But, uh, by the way, having that kind of memory doesn't make you a great person, by the way. It doesn't make you a great person. You know, uh, they once asked Rabbi Yosef, Yosef, how do you know so many poskim and everything? He's like, if you learn something, you know, 500 times, obviously you're going to know it by heart too. Mm-hmm. So, so some people have siyata dishmaya. So just because you know you know something doesn't make you a great person. There are many big tamid chayim from Lakewood until Queens to Miami. There are many big tamid chayim. It doesn't make them a leader of Kali Israel. You have to, it has to be in your DNA. It has to be your mission in life. Like Moshe Rabbeinu, it was his mission in life. If it's not your mission, no matter how much you know, you'll never be that person. You know what I mean? So. Uh, Going back to what we were saying before, so a person has to understand that when a person comes to learn Torah, you need Siyat Dishmaya. You need Siyat Dishmaya. And uh, Siyat Dishmaya is not something that comes, it's, there's two ways in Siyat Dishmaya. And that's the, that's the whole thing of our Shi'ur. Don't wait for the Shamayim to wake you up. Awaken yourself up. There's two things. That the uh, Ariya Kadosh says the world runs on. One is called man and mad, and one is called mad. Okay, man stands for main nukvin, and mad stands for main dechurin. In English, it's Aramaic. In English, this means female waters. And male waters. What's female waters versus male <coughs> waters? What does that mean? It says, Rabbi Nohari says, the whole world works on midah keneged midah. Whatever you bring up is whatever you're going to get back down. If you're going to bring up something that's 20% of the mitzvah, then you, according to your capabilities, of course. This is what everybody has a mistake. People think in life that as long as I do the bare minimum, I am good. I did whatever I had to do. 65%. You understand? I did. I the Torah says keep Shabbat. I didn't work on Shabbat. I did good. I didn't do borer. I did good on Shabbat. What if Hashem expects for you to keep Shabbat also on a higher level? What if Hashem expects you to do something else? What if Hashem expects you to wear white clothes on Shabbat? What if that's your yehud on Shabbat? What if Hashem expects you on Shabbat not only to keep di, uh, Isur Dimur, but also Isur Hirur? What if Hashem expects you on Shabbat to learn, to, you know, there was one Hasidic Rabbi, I forget his name. He never used to sleep on Shabbat. Ah, Shamor. It do. says, Shamor at Yom HaShabbat. He says, what kind of show you, I'm, I'm going to watch him if I fall asleep on Shabbat. What if Hashem expects you on Shabbat to do, uh, uh, I don't know, um, to learn Torah Hasod the whole time? What if Hashem, what do you know what your Yehud is in life? And people are, they go through life thinking, well, listen, <clears throat> my expectations is, uh, it says keep the Torah. I go up there. I'm sure they're going to judge me according. They're going to expect from me what's written in the Torah and I'm good. You're making a big mistake. If that's what you think the Torah is, then Torah Hasod is not for you. If that's what you think the Torah is, the Torah Hasidut is not for you. If that's what you think the Torah... You belong in, in a different in a different place. You belong in the in, in the kindergarten of Tyre. You know, Avodat Hashem is something that's ever growing. It's ever growing, and Hashem made the world in such a way, Apia Teva, that whatever you give up to Him, that's whatever the tools you're gonna get back to serve Him. If you give Him tool, if you 
bring up tools. You bring, we call it in, in Kabbalah terms, Rafach Nitzotzot. If you're going to bring up to him the 288 sparks, that those 288 sparks are considered the best of the 288 sparks, he will give you 288 sparks in return that will give you the best tools to serve him, that you won't fall. So what does that mean? I'm going to give you a tefillat shacharit, for example. What's the first mitzvah you wake up in the morning? Modeani lefanecha kayam. So thinking about that man umad, what does the life of a perfect Jew look like according to Rabbeinu Ha'ari and the Rabbeinu Ha'arashash? Pray six hours a day. No. I'm just talking about the ma'aseh. Oh. First of all, a person, his day starts at chatzot. At chatzot. He has to do tikkun chatzot. Okay? That tikkun chatzot happens from midnight. From midnight until half an hour before dawn. Okay? What's the point of tikkun chatzot? The point of tikkun chatzot is to join in the tsa'ar of the shechina. That till today, Hashem's name is desecrated and there is an avoid the Zara on Kodesh HaKodeshim. The reason we don't cry about it because we were desensitized. How would you feel if, you, if somebody came to your father's house right now, kicked him out, and said, it's my land right now, it's my house. What would you do? You'd fight him? You'd be upset? If you can't kick him out, you'd cry a bit probably? Yeah. Imagine for the last 1,950 plus years, there's a squatter on Hashem's house. Some tsar you could do. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, five seconds. Uh, Victor Miller says, at least five seconds, sit on the floor, say, Al narod babel sham yashavnu gam bachinu. Once a year on Tisha B'Av. According to Rabbeinu HaRashash, once a day you have to do it. Once a day. At Chatzot. You see, if you're already asking, I can't do it, no, why or how, why we gotta do it, it's already a pegam in your Avodah. I'm gonna give you another perfect guy according to Rabbeinu Ha'ari and Rabbeinu Arashash. His day starts at Chatzot. After he finishes Tikkun Chatzot, it's a must to learn at least 10, 20 minutes of Torah. I'm gonna tell you something scary. According to Rabbeinu Arashash, Nadari, Harashash, if a person doesn't learn Torah from midnight until dawn, at least something, his feeling that he's wearing is powerless. It's powerless. You know who he's depending on? Some guy in his community, some guy in his city that woke up after Chatzot and he did it from his Shorosh Neshama. Could you imagine your thing? Koshek and Koshek, if you're spending after midnight watching uh, Instagram uh, reels. That's a big pagam, no? It's a big pagam. We'll close before then. We'll close before, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. That means, according to Rabbeinu Ari and Rabbeinu Ari, it's a chiyuv. It's almost a chiyuv to learn at least something. Now, for the guys who come to Shahari 6.30 in the morning, it's very easy. You're waking up at least 5.45, 5.30. You can at least say some divrei Torah, something, to be ma'alei tashkina. Okay? So that means after Tikkun Chasot, you need at least some limud Torah. At least some limud. Tehilim katsilat limud? Of course. David HaMelech says reading Tehilim is like davening and learning at the same time. Two for the price of one. Two for the price of one. You know, you said that, Tihirim, I have to tell you a story about the Chafetz Chaim. You can tell that I've been reading his biography. They said, that's the guy. It's my only shot. So um, it says, about the Chafetz Chaim, one guy once came to him. I said to him, Rebbe, I need you to daven for me. It, it was known by the Chafetz Chaim. He used to learn Zohar, by the way. Every week, he used to learn the Zohar of the Parashat. Litei. And uh, one time, somebody came to him. I forgot the name. I think it was the the person who started the Panovich Yeshiva. Somebody remind me his name, no? Not Rav Shach. Of Kahanaman. Of Kahanaman. 
and uh, he met with Rohan and Basarman. You guys know who he is, Rohan Basarman? Yeah. The guy on my wall, the rabbi Kiddush, on my wall. Kiddush yeah? Hashem. The one who died on Kiddush Hashem. He said, listen, I, I want to meet the Chavetz Chaim, he said. He said, okay, it's not so hard, by the way. He doesn't have Gabayim or anything. You go to him, go to his house. If the Rebbetzin lets you in, she'll, she'll let you see him. As he comes inside the house, he hears people crying. And he hears somebody crying, but such a cry, like you want to cry with them. He says, he says the Rebbetzin, who's, who's crying over there? He's like, don't, don't pay too much attention about it. It's my husband. So that's fine. He said, somebody just came over here that was very, very ill. He a- she asked him to pray for him, for her. And he's crying for her. That's what you're hearing right now. I've kind of said from the second I heard that, I said, I'm never going to leave Radin again. It's just a simple Jew, simple youth. could stand over there and just cry for another human being. Just because he's in pain, I don't want to leave such a person. But I didn't know who was like that too, Papa Sadi. People think about Basali used to write Kamiot and stuff. But Basali never wrote, from my knowledge, a Kamiya in his life. But Mordechai Sharabi did. But Mordechai Sharabi used to write Kamiot. And used to do Pidyon Nefesh. Used to do it. But Basali, from what my knowledge, he never wrote a Kamiya in his life. In my knowledge. If I'm wrong, but Basali, please. But from what I know, he never. He said when he was a young boy, Baba Sali once, his name was Yisrael. Mm-hmm. He want, there's something with the name Yisrael, by the way. He once cursed a kid in his class. Mm-hmm. When his father heard about it, he slapped him in his mouth and he said, your mouth is meant to bless, not curse. That's what he told him. And it, it shook him so much that that sentence from his father, he never ever cursed again in his life. And his tefillot, uh, you guys know countless stories. Never came back where come. A person's lashon has so much power in it. You know, when a person feels pain somewhere in his body, you know what that pain really comes from? You know how it gets healed, really? For example, I was feeling pain in my left shoulder this past three days. What was my first intuition to think of? should have never wrestled. Huh? I should have never wrestled that 18-year-old. Huh? <laughs> My Maharoni. Well, it started here actually in the Zeroa. It's Tulin. And then it went up. It went up. What was my first intuition? The left hand is Yudke Vafke with the Nikuda of a Shva. If you know the Yehud of the Merkava, what's, what name of Hashem is in your left hand? Yud. K, Vav, K, with a Shva, right? What Nikuda is Kenege the Shva? Which Sphira? Gvura. So I made some Pagam, look at me, in my Sphira of Gvura, that caused me to have pain in my Gvura. So you could go to the doctor, and you could ask him for medication, this and that. But that's not the real trufa. What's the real trufa? Teshuvah. To find what the pagam you did in your sphira, hagvura. Fix it, open up the pipe again. Let the Shem Havaya flow through. And then you're going to get the trufa. I'm telling you a story. Since you're looking at me with such thirst. Gavriel Gavura. Gavriel Chai. Yosef <laughs> You know, the Rebbe in our yeshiva, our Kleinman, he's a very special youth. We all know that. Mm-hmm. You know, he survived COVID when his brother died, his twin brother. Brain very hard. Remember? Remember yeah. that whole thing? Yeah. You know, when he was in COVID, he actually had an out of body experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and he saw the Rebbeim in the yeshiva. He saw us. Hey, whatever, it's a story for a different time. And uh, he said in, in when, when he came back from the, from the, when he woke up, he said it. And uh, when he was a young, his grandfather was a big tzaddik, his grandfather. He was a Dayan in uh, the old country. 
And when they moved to America, his father is still alive, by the way. He's like 90 something years old. He works at 47th Street. He's still working. Yeah, yeah, maybe he goes here and there, but he's a diamond guy. <clears throat> One of those old diamond guys back in the day from the diamond district. And um, he said one time his grandfather, he was old and he was taking care of him in the middle of the night. I don't remember the full story completely, but something that happened like this, he fell or something and he got hurt very badly. With himself? No, the grandfather, mm -hmm. who was old. And he called Hatzala. And Hatzala came, middle of the night, old man. And the grandfather asked him, he said, I remember this like it was yesterday. He said, you guys dealt with many, many situations like this. What was the Aveira that all these people did that they had this fracture, fracture whatever this situation happened to them, so I should know and I should make chuba about it. <laughs> I'm, talk I'm talking to you about a 70 plus year old man. <laughs> Hatsala comes to him, he has a, I don't know what happened, he had a, whatever, a fracture or something in his, in his thigh or his leg. And he asked them, what was the Avera that they did? I so I should know, because they dealt with so many of them. I have, so so that's, that's not, I have no idea. <laughs> like, what but look at the Timimut. <sighs> look at the, the innocence. You know what I mean? When's the last time we thought when we had something happen to us, what was the Avera that we did that happened that we had this? <laughs> when was the last time? Holy Shav. You know? Holy Shav. We have no, th we have no thoughts like we think we're tzaddikim. Going back to what I said, we think because we keep Shabbos. We think, we think, we think we keep Shabbos. You know, it's a guy. He's in the, he's in the war. Let's say the Israeli war right now. Iron swords. He thinks he's in the war. He's holding a gun. He's let's say he's serving. You have to fight. You have to shoot. You got to catch the bad guys. You got to go in the tunnels. You gotta fight the, you gotta find the RPGs, you gotta find all the things. What, what are you, because you're holding a gun, you're fought? Oh, because you're born Jewish, that's it, you're entitled? You have avodah to do. You know your avodah? You don't know your avodah. You have a lot of avodah to do. You're still alive, you have a lot of avodah. Look at this. According to Rabbeinu Ha'ari, a person who missed Tikkun Hatzot, He's already missing a tikkun in the whole day. But that's passable. It's passable. Okay. Comes shaharit. <laughs> Any shaharit that you dive in. And you guys are big boys. I'm confident in telling you this. Any shaharit that you dive in. I'm just looking. You're just, you're just standing. You're sitting right next to me. That you dive in without a minion. Without a minion. You missed half of the power of shaharit. Because of the repetition. What's the repetition? What am I doing by davening shaharit b'minyan? What am I doing? You're a man. I'm doing Hashem a favor? No. Mm -hmm. Am I doing him a favor? Am I doing the Ensof Baruch Hu, the infinite one a favor? No. By davening shaharit with a minyan? Yes, Does he need your amen? No. See, now I'm hot. <laughs> a person who davens shaharit... You have to know the avodah that you're doing. You see, our stupidity comes from our lack of knowledge between you, Torah. It's so sickening when I think about it. And I've been around. I've been to Lithuanian places, Hasidic places, the Sephardi places. You know, I was once in Eretz Yisrael. What's his name? Rosh, look at me. I was once in Eretz Yisrael. I was taking my test on Rabbanut. And Nechal Shlomo, I don't want to swear. I still have the recording on my phone. I called it Shi'ur So that I heard in Yerushalayim at midnight. I was studying at midnight in uh, Ramot in Yerushalayim next to Kever Shmuel Navi. Not next to, next to, but it was close. In the Yeshiva. It was my first Rabbanut test that I took. I was staying over there with a couple of my friends from Kolo. And they went to sleep. It was already one, two o'clock, but I, st I stayed up to memorize the simanim. Keep on memorizing them. And I'm sitting there, I'm memorizing right? and I see four or five old rabbis coming into the yeshiva, say, Chal. You know how the Israelis do coffee with that metal, uh, 
Um, the metal, you know, the pasta. You know, the old metal pasta yeah, is making the coffee. The Turkish coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're making the coffee, and I come in, oh, it smells so good. And they'll come in, they're learning to write hasud. And I have a little bit of a background in it. So after they all left, I come up to them, and I started to get into conversation with one of them. Conversation. And I told him, wow, he's like, oh, you know anything about Tarot Tasod? This guy was at least 67 years old. And I said, oh, yeah, I, I, I was I training a bit I, stupid. I dabbled so, yeah, I, I dabbled a bit. He's like, uh, he's like, what do you know? I said, oh, I know that there is a Olam HaNikudim, that there is the seven kings that died, and there are Olam HaNikudim, there's 28 sparks, you have to pick them up. He's like, it's not Olam HaNikudim, it's Olam HaAkudim. And I, I was like, this guy who was over here sitting learning Kabarot HaRashash and Kabarot HaPesach. I was listening to them, I was learning Kiddushim. And I'm like, what did you say? The, the mistake was so... Flagrant? So, st- <laughs> I don't want to say the word stupid, but I was like, how could you say such a thing? That means even people who learn Torah has saw they... T- you have to have a zechut to know what you're doing. You know, when you look at your kids, you know what you have to look at? You're looking at a Merkava of the Shekhinah. When a person looks at his wife, he has, to, he has to think to himself, he's looking at the Shekhinah. You have to think, you look at the Malchus. When a person goes up to the Torah, you have to look at it as if you're looking at Za. When you're putting the Rimonim, you have to think to yourself, I'm putting Chas. Rabbi said, without Primuta Torah, nothing matters. Everything is fake. It's an illusion. It's just another religion. If you don't have Pimus at Torah, it's nothing. This is why I'm, I'm, I put this into your heads every single day. And I teach you Kavanot. I teach you, I'm trying to give some flavor in your Torah. Look what Shacharit is, Rabbi Isai. Look what Shacharit is. Just look at Shacharit. What's Shacharit? Our Avodah, our work during the week when I dive in Shacharis, Let's say today, tomorrow is what day? Tuesday. Yom Shalishi. Hashir Shayu Alivim Omim Ala Dukhan. Mizmor Lasa. I'm Davin in Shaharit. I Davin Lachash. And then I Davin Chazara. What am I doing by Davining Lachash and answering Chazara? You're performing the prayer. Every Tfilah is missing Gar. Bo El Paro. Chota Bo El Paro. Come to Paro. Why Hashem said, come to Paro? Not go. Not go. Come to Paro. Why is it two and one? Bo. Two and one. Every mochin, every maturity that you bring into the world comes in two stages. Two and one. Chokma and Bina. And then at the end of the week, you get the keter. Mm-hmm. Keter itenu lecha. Right? Where's the dot? The dot is just a combination of chokhmah and bina. Ah, okay. It's just a combination of chokhmah and bina. Okay? When you daven every day, Gavriya, Chai, Yosef Chai, when you daven every day, the lachash, Lachash is the, is the, is the, is the uh, sign. You're just bringing in the Bina of the Shacharit. When you hear the Chazara, you're bringing in the what? The Chokhmah of Shacharit. <clears throat> that means if you miss one Chazara during the week, one Chazara, what are you missing? It's like you have a whole puzzle and you have bits and pieces missing. You're going to pay for those pieces that are missing, by the way. How are you going to pay for it? You're going to be stuck in traffic. Somebody's going to tell you something you don't like. You sit in here, you sit in there. You're going to pay for all these things because you're me- it's your job. Next week, switch seats for me. He's like, getting like, too much over here. You- it's your job. <laughs> and also in Mincha and Marv. By the way, I say this to myself too. We could all work on our mar, even though it doesn't have chazar. You ever realize uh, mar has no chazar? It doesn't have ora chokhmah. It doesn't need it because it's kli chitzon. 
It's the last Kli. So let me teach you something crazy now. Do you know Shacharit, Mincha, and Aravit are all three parts of one system? That means every day you have the Pnimiyutakli, the inner part of the vessel, the middle vessel, and the outside part of the vessel. When you daven in Shacharis every day, you're fixing the Pnimiyutakli, the inner part of the vessel. Which is the hardest? It's the hardest. Minha is the middle part of the vessel, and Aravit is the outer. outer part of the vessel. Aravit is the easiest. It's the outer part. It's the chitonius. Nobody right. wants the whole point of the pinut. That's why Shachris is the biggest avodah. Korbanot. Baruch Shamar. Korbanot again. At the end. At the end. Yotzer Or. Ashma. Whoa, what an avodah. What an avodah. If you miss one piece, you're missing a piece of the puzzle. So according to the Rashash, if you miss one piece of your tefillah, I'm not even talking about Talmud Torah yet. Just your tefillah, you missed one piece. Your whole puzzle for the whole week, the whole week that you did is missing. That's just Shacharit Mincha Aravit every day for six days a week. On Shabbat? Kabbalah on Shabbat? Erev Shabbat? Erev Shabbat? You have to cut your nails. According to the Ari, you have to burn them. You gotta burn them. You have to go to the mikveh after Shnai Mikra Vachatargum. If you don't do that, you don't get your Neshama Yitera according to the Ari. You have to say Kabbalat Shabbat. Do Hakafot. Say Aravi. Do Hakafot again at home. Shaharit. Hakafot again. Musaf. Minha. So, three Siwuda. But you miss one Siwuda, you miss the whole puzzle. And I didn't even say Kirat Shema Lamita. Every day, if you miss Kirat Shema Lamita, you're missing the, the preparation of the next day. What's Kirat Shema Lamita according to Dari and Arashash? It's the preparation for the next day. That means to be a perfect Yud. Bechitzon Yud. You have to daven, Shachar Ismil Chamarv, do Tikkun Chatzot, Kirat Shema Lamita. Every day do Chok Yisrael. Because if you miss one day of Chok Israel, you're missing part of your extra neshama that you're supposed to get. That means what you do in the tefillah by saying Hashir Shayu Dukhan, you have to do it in Torah too. And that you do in Chok Israel. And then on, on Erev Shabbat, to do Shnaim Mikra, go to the mikveh, cut your nails, burn them according to Rabbi Hari. Do Kabbalat Shabbat, Aravid, do all the hakafot that you need to do. Do all the tefillot and all the si'udot. And if you miss one of them, you were not a perfect soldier this week. You weren't a complete You weren't a complete soldier. And then you ask, how come HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't give me what I want? You didn't do your job. And by the way, all this you have to do while having a wife and kids making you crazy, showering them, going to work, and all that stuff. Now you could understand what Hashem told to Adam Arishon. That with the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread. That's called the sweat of your brow. What did you expect that you're going to sit on the, and the life? This is the world. This is the world of work. Now, if you don't do all these things, then you're going to get to work a different way. Anyways, you're going to do it. It depends how you're going to do it. If you do it in the Bahamas and you're gonna get I was gonna say something, I'm not gonna say it because it's gonna be too obvious. You know, one time a guy told Ravitzak Zilbrish, you look at me, Mr. Bahamas. One time one guy came to Ravitzak Zilbrish, you know Ravitzak Zilbrish, he was son in law, yeah? Or he was his brother in law. The question book, no? Son in law, yeah? The question, the wallet books. The wallet books, yeah. He came, one guy came up to him, he's like, how come my neighbor, they were in Bnei Brak, the city of Rabia Kiva, you know who used to teach in Bnei Brak, right? 
Gemara Sanhedrin, Rabbi Akiva, used to teach him neighbor. One time, when I come, he says, "How come my neighbor this? My neighbor says, I don't know what came to my head." I said to him, "What if you want like your neighbor kidney stones?" He said, "I didn't know what was coming out of my mouth." And that and that guy who was complaining he knew that his neighbor had that stuff. <laughs> He's like, how did you know, Rabbi? Is it you're gonna take all of his cars and say you're gonna have that his yisurim? He's like, I'm good. I don't want those yisurim. You don't know what goes on in people's houses. What goes on in people's lives? Lives. Lives. Jews' lives matter. You don't know what's going on over there. My Everybody has their own the uh, chimichangas. You know what I mean? Everyone. Something on their plate. Yes, of course. What do you mean? Everybody goes through something. The only question is how bad you want to keep on going. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to tell you one thing from the parasha about Boel Paro. About what Moshe Rabbeinu did. By the way, just going back to our to the Seder Hayom, I've been wanting to give you guys this shiur for a long time. How to, how to be a perfect Yid according to Rabbeinu Ha'ari and the Rashash. Let's just do it quickly. So every day you have to do, your day starts with what? Tikkun No, really, Kriyat Shema Mita has to come right before the Tikkun Hatzot. So first is Kriyat Shema Mita. Then, <laughs> then Tikkun Hatzot. Somebody quit already. Yeah, somebody quit already. <laughs> then limud Torah. Then you get to sleep for two, three. And no, I don't want to say something. You said plocha style. I, I, I don't want to say what Goye once heard an interview of. He was a basketball player. A very good one. And he said, I used to go four, three hours of sleep at night. I used to wake up five in the morning. Do a thousand jump shots. A thousand jump shots. Have some time with my family. Again, go to the court, do another thousand. By the time I got to the game at night, it was so robotic. It was impossible for me to miss the shot. And it's the average 30, 40, 50 points at night. You know, that's a goy. What does that mean? I'm not telling you to go wake up five in the morning and do jump shots. I'm telling you the dedication that he had to win. I promise you one thing, everybody in this room could be a Baba Sali. Everyone. If you have dedication. You want to get married, you want to have kids, you want to have part of that everybody can get what they want. What's for Hashem to give you a couple of million dollars? Amen. Somebody woke up. Oh, he's back in the game now, guys. That's it. He's like, he didn't give up anymore. What's for Hashem to give you a couple of million dollars? It's nothing. Not even nothing. It, it, to say it's something would be kfira. It's nothing. But why would Hashem give you something that will make you fall in the pit? But you could get what you want. But you have to do the mad woman. So first of all, you got to do Kriyat Shema Lamita. Tikkun Chatzot. Limu Torah. Shacharit Bazman. Yes. Avada. Shaharit Bazman. Bazman. Okay? Mincha Bazman. According, when did the Ari pray in Mincha? Mincha Katana used to pray. He didn't pray Mincha Gedor. Yeah. Then, Aravit, right after Mincha, he used to do Before Shkia. Right after Shkia. Mincha, right, right in the. Shkia, right, right, right. Back to back. Aravit, back to back. Now, after Shaharit, you have to do Chokli Israel. If you don't do Chokli Israel, you're missing that piece of the extra Nishama that you're going to get on Shabbat. Now you need that extra piece that you're going to get because on Shabbat you don't get that extra Nishama. You don't have the power to go for the next week. You understand? That means every day you have to do Chokli Israel at least 10 15 minutes. At least 10 15 minutes. That's Chumash, Navi, Kituvi, Mishnah, Gemara, Zohar, Musar, Halakha. Five minutes each. Five minutes each. It's 40 minutes. You see that here behind you? It's in English. It's 40 minutes. Look at me. It's in English know, right there. It's in English. It's in English. All right? That's during the week. Erev Shabbat comes. Erev Shabbat comes. 
at midnight before you do Tikkun Chatzot, you have to read the 26 Psukim of Yom Shishi, just the Psukim. And then you do Tikkun Chatzot. In the morning after Shacharit, you do Shnaim Mikra Vacha Targum. Erev Shabbat? Erev Shabbat. You can't do it during the week? No. According to the Ari, you cannot. The, according to the Ari, it must be done on Friday. As before Shacharit? After Shacharit. But according to Rabbeinu Ari, you have to do the 26 Psukim first at midnight. 26 Psukim. Thursday night. Thursday night after, after midnight. So basically, you don't need a job. I can't show it to you right, right now. Right this is a full time job. Eight hours a day. This is eight hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week. <laughs> and then in the morning, <laughs> after you do, after you do, the, <laughs> hopefully, after Shnayim Mikra, you finish Shnayim Mikra, then you have to go to the Mikveh, burn your, uh, cut your nails, okay. cut your nails. Before Shabbat, you have to take hot water, really hot water, wash your hands, feet, and legs. Wash your hands, shower feet, and legs. No, this is separate from the shower. It's called Shalhevet Ya. Different. It's different, it's separate. It's called Shalhevet Ya. Hands, feet, and feet. Just the hands, feet, and the legs. This nice. cleans all the klipa from Asiya. From the Asiya. Slicha. And then after that, you clean all that stuff. You have to wear white clothes. Five garments. Everything. Lava. <laughs> Nobody does. At least don't wear black. Okay? So you have to, yeah, so yeah, at least not black. Okay? No, no black suit. Anything but black. Wow. Nothing, anything no black but black. The color black is Asur. No black shoes? No black shoes even. Wow. Nothing. It's a makhluk, it really. Benish Chai says shoes is not counted. But whatever, it's a makhluk. Yeah, something. I, I personally try not to wear black socks. I try to wear them blue. Yeah, I got my blue so ones on. After the chatzot or before? According to the Bati Lagani, if you finish your Shnayim Mikra right, be- right after Shaharit, you can go even before chatzot. According to the Bati Lagani. I rely on that. Because I don't have time, you know? Now, this is all in between showering the kids, doing the shopping, going to work, coming back, answering the wife. You see, in the Jewish person's mind, there is no time for Averot. There is no time for, You're always in action of mitzvah There's no time to look at Instagram He's already in So after that Now, shahar, now uh, Shabbat is the hardest job <laughs> Shabbat is the hardest job why is Shabbat? It's not enough to daven on Shabbat. During the week, it's enough to daven. On Shabbat, you have to daven and you have to eat. What's so hard? That's the best part? Like you what if you're full? You now it's a problem. If you're full, you didn't make time in the midst of eating. Because you have to eat with an onig. Sudashi is hard. That's the hardest part. Sudashi is also the most important part. Because that's the keter. That's the aleph of bo. Bo el paro. It's the aleph. If you're missing the aleph, you're missing the keter of the whole week. Eat it, eat it. You understand? You have to eat with a tanug. You understand? Now, but how do you do it? Kabbalat Shabbat. First of all, mincha of Arab Shabbos is the keter of the week. Just of the week. Shira Shirim, it's, from my knowledge, is not written by the Ari. That was, if I'm not mistaken, a Hasidic. Uh, enactment. enactment. Yeah, they said that uh, I think of Levi Yisrael Mibardichev or the Noam Ali Melech. He said, "Read Shir Shirim Erev Shabbos." He used to awaken all the love, all the olamot. Used to awaken up. I don't know. Don't quote me on this one, but I didn't see Shir Shirim in Shara Kavanot. I could be mistaken. I'm not over here knowing two hundred thousand books by heart. You understand? I do. It falls in the cracks. You know, once in a while. So Minchav. I'm not sure. So Minchav Erev Shabbat is very important. That's the only tefillah that we daven dressed like, like a book, because it's the keter of the week. It's the keter of the week. Kabbalat Shabbat. After Kabbalat Shabbat, right away, arvid. It shouldn't be any hefsek. So no, it's, it's not good, good to pray. Yeah? It's well, not no, good to pray That early. thing was enacted much later. Huh? That was already enacted much later for the sake of not making people fall asleep. So it's not good to pray. Now what's the problem oh. with the rabbi shear? Everybody falls asleep. <laughs> so what did we gain? <laughs> so really, so whatever. According to Rabbi Ari, right after Kabbalat Shabbat must be Aravit. After Aravit, you go home two hakafot on your table. Shabbat table. Shabbat table. Do two hakafot. 
first hakafa without anything, second hakafa according to Rabbi, if you do with hadasim. Not with Besabi. Oh, it has that's... to be with Hadassim. Kosher Hadassim. Two, Two Hadassim oh, has to be with. You just walk around? You just walk around. You say, Zachor Vishamur Badibur Echad Neyamaru. You make a Hakafa. <laughs> and they say, Your honor's gonna what the heck? You That's why you gotta start from the beginning. If, you're, if you start in the middle, you're in trouble. <laughs> After the Hakafa, you have to do Kiddush. The Kiddush has to be done according to Rabbi Nohari. Which is? Somebody has to pour the wine. Put the three drops, yes. pick and up the cup for you, you take it with yes. two hands, then you hold it just with your right hand, like this. You understand? <laughs> like this. If you shake it, says hello, because it's fire all After the kiddush, which is done the kavana, the kdusha tahara, you do nitilat yadai. First you say Viten Lecha Elohim. Mitala Shamay Mishmane Ait. You say the whole blessing of Yitzhak to Yaakov before Nitilat Yadai. Obviously, you blessed your kids already. Mm-hmm. You say Hamotzi during the Siudah. You're now allowed to talk Devarim Betelim. No politics, no money, no nothing. How is your nothing according to her? It has to be totally big dusha of Tara. a monk. Now, let's say your wife was on table. You need to speak to her. But you know, got to speak to her different mundane thing. You have to have kavana through speaking these Monday things. It should be with Dusha Abu Tahara. Because for what? Exactly. Shalom Bay. Shalom Bay. That means Shalom Bay, Malchut in the Keta. You gotta combine everything together. Yeah, and is that, that means it, then after that, after you finish scratch, after you finish the Suhuda, you have to know, you have to read Masechet Eruvin in the Mishnayot. Oh. According to Rabbi Noah After the meal. After the meal, you gotta do Masechet Eruvin. Why Masechet Eruvin? Right now, you're trying to combine the whole week as like a whole Eruv. You're trying to bring everything to Kedusha. Which means the whole thing? The whole thing you have to do. Masechet Eruvin. The whole, the whole thing. Oh, After Masechet Eruvin, everybody goes to sleep. Now you learn on Shabbat only at Sahayim. Sodot HaTorah. Only Plinius HaTorah. That's it. Oh. <laughs> After you learn Kimi Sahayim, according to Rabbi Ari, after midnight, you go see the Shekhinah in the Kodesh HaKodesh. Uh, after, uh, after midnight. And then when you do what you gotta do, you, <laughs> you, you bring up the Nishamot Chadashot, the new souls. You wake up early in the morning, you have to scratch out of it, No tikkun hatzot, you go to the mikveh. Now in the mikveh of the morning of Shabbat, you get an extra nishama yetera, according to Rabbi Noahari. An extra nishama yetera. So you get three? There's two. Two no, you get. Two. One, 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 no, I do not know all that. I might skip the Masechet Eruvin once in a while. After that, you wake up in the morning, you go to Shul. Now you have to get an Aliyah. <laughs> and that's you have it. Sixth Aliyah. You saw, 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 you saw. After that, Musaf. In the in the Chazara of Musaf is the Zivug Hagadol. The Zivug of the whole week is in Musaf of Shabbat. Better to get the sixth over Maftir? This year is worth a million dollars. Huh? 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 Avad, Ha'ari always used to go up, Aliyah Shishi. Yeah, Aliyah Shishi used to go up. Yusuf used to go up, Yusuf and Tzadik. And then in Musaf, you have to have Kavana, the Zivuk of Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. It's a big Zivuk. In the Chazara. By the way, you're not allowed to talk in Shul. Rabbi No Ha'ari wouldn't even say Divrei Torah in a Beit HaKamezer. Wow. Just not to speak in Shul. And then after that, you go home, do again Hakafot. Twice? Again, again, Hakafo twice. You do Suda quickly and you have to sleep now. You have to sleep? You must sleep according to Rabbi Ari. Half an hour, an hour. It's called Oneg. Shabbat. Oh. Uh, and then you wake up for Suda. Shalishi in Mincha, obviously. And you do Mincha. And Mincha, Va'anit Filati is the biggest Etratzon. Vanit filati is the biggest. That means after you did all that you did, you did chacharit, mincha, aravit, kashman, amita, and all everything you did. At the end, you get one etratzon. 
Only one. Only one. Before Mincha before. of Shabbat, when you open up the Echa, is one etratzon. Varit viti lecha Hashem etratzon. This is the biggest etratzon of the week. No, before, before me, before. That, in the huh? No, no, no. In the Mincha, and you, when you open up the Echa, is Varit Chilati, is a big etratzon. You get to ask one wish. Ben Ishchai is said to ask for Parnasa during that time. Mincha is very powerful. So that's only Mansa. if you do all those prerequisites to get that result? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So let's say you do 70% of those prerequisites. You're only going to get 70% return. We'll take it. It's not bad. See, that's the problem. That's, that, the problem. that's exactly what I'm trying to approve from your neshama. Well, you you have to take, it. no, I'm good only with 100%. 110%. percent you got to approve that kind of ideology. It's not impossible. Yeah, it's not impossible. You live and breathe for it. Everything, is Everything is possible. So then look at the Narvi. Oh no, there's something else. After Sudash Lishi, the Big Bang. After Sudash Lishi, after Mincha, and then there's the Big Bang, Aravit of Lel Shabbat. Where is the Big Bang in that? When you say Vinoam. When you say Vinoam, after you dive in Mar, before you say Kadosh Kadosh Kadosh, you say Vinoam, you should have said it. That Vinoam is very important. What should you think? You have to stay, stay. All what you did during the week, you have to channel it in the Vino Am and boomerang it for the rest of your week. Start again next week. And you start it new again. Baruch Adonai Le'olam, Amen Ve'amen. Amen. 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 Am